Hello boys and girls, Phoenix Fire here again. Battle for today is an OU match against Golden Link 40. His channel page can be found down in the description. I was keen on trying out a few new sets I made over the last couple of days and he gladly joined me for a casual match. I expect to see a lot of out of the ordinary sets, but all in good fun with reasonable effectiveness. Here we go. Opponent leads off with Espeon, while I make an appearance with Virizion. Despite an unfavorable matchup right off the bat, I am positive the foe will not strike yet and try to exploit a possible shift. As Espeon takes time to improve its stats, my defensive Ferizion is able to erect a light screen, severely lessening any attack my enemy might employ. With the first barrier established, my adversary scents trouble and commands Espeon to strike with Psychic. Undeterred by this powerful blow thanks to the protection offered by light screen, even when boosted by a single Calm Mind and Life Orb, Ferizion can continue on and complete my temporary fortifications. Both screens constructed, I recall my Pokémon to protect it from further harm and send out Jirachi. Not easily distracted, my foe sharpens its stats even more. Packing two Calm Minds and Life Orb, only Light Screen is withholding the untapped power of this energetic feline. Fainting a Choice Scarf to dishearten my opponent, the Gambit fails to pay off as Espeon blasts my Steel type with hidden power fire. Luckily bulky enough with Light Screen still intact to shake it off, Jirachi bruises the foe with U-Turn. As Espeon's wounds are nearly fatal, I call Fort Mamoswine to finish the job. As the first victim is claimed, the score stands at 6 versus 5. Down his first combatant, my opponent continues to brawl with Chandelure. Benefiting from a focus sash to preserve myself from any death blows, I hold the line as my enemy cautiously scouts with Energy Ball. Albeit super effective, the light screen once again proves to be a valuable asset to my team. As the Mammoth cracks the area with Earthquake, Chandelure crumbles under the immense pressure, lowering the score to 6 versus 4. Eager to outstall my shields, Ferrotorn is released onto the play area. Figuring the foe will only be able to deal little damage until Reflect wears off, I take my chance and set up Stealth Rock, a very favorable move in the end as the opponent does protect itself, to render any direct attack useless. As none of my fighters that can deal with the sturdy combatant will enjoy the draining properties of Leech Seed, I hold fast and gauge what force Mamoswine can bring to bear against this stalwart plant. Confident the foe will not use Leech Seed consecutively lest it fails and might even use Protect, I am safe to tap out for Salamence, while the opponent chooses a safe option in the form of Spikes. As both reflect in light screen fade, the two teams are once again on equal footing. Not wanting to overpredict in fear of Feathertorn carrying on its mining duty, I direct Salamence to use Flamethrower, an attack that is handily stopped by the foe's replacement. Unable to combat the jellyfish with any of my moves, nor secure in the ability to endure a possible Ice Beam attack, Salamence is hauled out immediately for Jirachi. Again, the adversary handily predicts my switch and installs Toxic Spikes. As the foe continues to anticipate my moves, it shows that I am facing a true veteran. In order to lessen the effectiveness of my foe's Pokémon, my main battle plan is to reinstate both Light Screen and Reflect. Even with all the skill in the world, a player cannot win if their strikes fail to deliver a decent punch. Nevertheless, Frizion is badly damaged and must be revitalized in order to pull it off. Certain that any move by Tentacruel will only dispense minor harm, I prepare to ment my Pokémon. Taking little to no damage thanks to my grass typing, my wish takes effect and heals my Pokémon for over half its HP. Trusting I can now set up against my opponent, my plan is cut short immediately as Tentacruel outspeeds and brings down the hammer in the form of Venoshock. Not only is it boosted by Tentacruel's own poison typing, my major stats alignment doubles the power of set onset as well. Caught off guard by this Tentacruel's trained in speed, Frizion perishes as a result dropping the score to 5 versus 4. Eager to make up for my over-assumption, Mamoswine stands ready once more to counter my foe. Alert to the fact that Ferritor might pop in to block me off, I change my battle plan and lunge forward with Endeavor. As Ferritor is fielded, my attack sets the enemy's HP to my own, severely crippling the mighty Bulkwart. Undeaded by the iron barbs and poison draining Mamoswine, the hardened creature refuses to back down. Not wanting to endure more punishment as a simple protect could end my Pokémon's existence, I recall Mamoswine to gain a free switch in later. Nearing critical health due to boat entry hazards and the burn shipping away at Jirachi, I plan to exert as many support moves as possible before I succumb to the inevitable. Positive the foe will forgo any attacks and let the burn shut down my Pokémon, I let Jirachi decree the opponent's fate with Doom Desire. 
Even though not very useful against Ferratorn, it forces the opponent to stay put, as none of his other Pokémon will dare endure it, leaving me a vital opportunity to bring in Zorok and sharpen my skills. Defiant even in the jaws of death, Jirachi completes my preparations as I wish my Zorok Godspeed. As Jirachi blacks out, the score balances out at 4 versus 4. With the path clear and my senses sharp, I let loose Zorak disguised as Salamence. Supposed to strike fear in the heart of my adversary, both spikes and toxic spikes pierce the veil and uncover my infiltrator as a normal Salamence wouldn't be affected by them. Undaunted by this flaw, I press on. Fearing flamethrower, Ferrothorn quickly protects itself, while I direct my fighters to use sword dance. As Doom Desire plummets to the ground and Wish heals my Pokémon, the stage is set for a spectacular show. Wounded beyond belief, I finally put Ferrothorn out of its misery with Flamethrower. Although this might seem peculiar on a physical Zorark, it provides my Pokémon the leverage I need against skill types like Fortress and other four times weak to fire Pokémon. Burned to cinders, the scoreboard is now four versus three. With Stealth Rock breaking Golem's sturdy ability, I can strike true with conviction that it won't survive my slick move. As my volley connects, Golem managed to hold on despite my multiple boosts. Near death yet not out, Golem gathers all his power and uses explosion. Unable to disarm the foe in time, Zorark is destroyed in the blast. With both Pokémon down for the count, the record stands at 3 vs 2. Having little left to combat the foe's tentacruel now that Zorark bit the dust, Salamence is my best bet now that I'm convinced it's equipped with only Scald and Venoshock in terms of offensive moves. As the enemy sprinkles my Pokémon for little damage, I command Salamence to bring its mightiest weapon to bear, Draco Meteor! As the comet plunges to the ground, I'm glad to see that it managed to do over half, more than enough to demolish my opponent if I'm able to exchange my Pokémon and erase the special attack reduction. Not wanting to risk to fall short in case Golden Link 40 swaps out to exploit my weakened offensive capabilities, I switch into Mamoswine. As it seemingly dies in vain to entry hazard, it does provide me to reset the power on my Salamence like mentioned earlier, allowing me to strike at full force anew. Both trainers down to their last two Pokémon, Salamence takes flight once more with renewed vigor and strikes fierce with Draco Meteor. Badly wounded thus unable to stomach another, Tentacruel perishes but not before using Rapid Spin, clearing the field of my Stealth Rock. As the end of the match draws near, the score is now lowered to 2 versus 1. Having only Electrifier left to combat my remaining participants, I cannot bear an Ice Punch with Salamence in this state. Therefore, I retreated for now in favor of Scrafty. As Ice Punch hits it head on, Scrafty remains standing. Figuring my Pokémon would surely fall to any attack, I leave it in to preserve Salamence. Only by intimidating my opponent might I be able to endure a single Ice Punch. As Electrifier tackles me with Low Kick, a move based on the weight of the opponent, Scrafty's mass proves to be too little and survives the blow. Against all odds, Scrafty carries through and knocks out Electrifier in a single blow, ending the match in a 2 versus nil. That was the game for today and I hope you enjoyed it. I've also uploaded the battle to the Poké Moshpit yesterday, so for those who haven't seen that yet, link down below if you want to check it out. Thanks again for all the new subscribers for the ad support, and for all the old fans out there, I couldn't have done it without you. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you on the next video. Phoenix Fire off!